Sorry for the absence. I've been adjusting to a new diet and haven't had much energy for doing videos lately. Speaking of adjusting, some people aren't adjusting well to the changing attitudes towards PvP in the MMO space. Let's discuss. PvP, player versus player. It has been a part of video games since their birth. In more recent times, you'd often see games released with PvP modes tacked on. This is because there was a belief in the industry that a game would not sell if it didn't have multiplayer. Most famously, or infamously, an EA exec declared that single player was dead. But more and more lately, that statement is being proven wrong and was also driven by EA's corporate attitude, which I'll touch on in a moment. Multiplayer games have been very popular for a long time, and they're still very popular. The MMO market is very healthy, despite declarations that the genre is dead. However, the trend towards live service games and the predatory business practices surrounding them are starting to turn people off from multiplayer and PvP in general. EA played a big role in this, but they're far from the only guilty party. If you look at the most successful games in the last couple of years, you'll see a trend. An increased interest in single-player story-driven games and story-driven PvE multiplayer experiences. And some of the biggest games of the past two years had absolutely no multiplayer component at all. It seems the only multiplayer PvP games that aren't seeing a downturn are in the Battle Royale genre. And that has seemingly hit its peak. New player versus player content in MMOs are more and more getting PvE elements. And co-op gameplay has been seeing a sharp rise in recent years. Unrestricted open PvP is becoming a thing of the past. That style of gameplay has been attracting a certain kind of crowd. To put it lightly, many hold the opinion that it is a gameplay style synonymous with toxicity and sociopathic player communities. And they aren't wrong. Elite Dangerous is a prime example of what happens to a game when PvP becomes the primary focus. Frontier developments can claim that this is a game based on exploration all they want. But it is plain to anyone who plays the game that most of the game development has been focused on combat and PvP. While exploration and non-combat gameplay have been treated as either an afterthought or with disdain as seen in how the Gnosis incident was handled. Open play has been overrun by griefers and player killers. This has splintered the community, forcing many to segregate themselves into either solo play or private groups like Mobius PvE where PvP of any kind is banned outright. Griefers and player killers are complaining they have nobody in the game to play with because they run almost everyone else off. Elite is one of the more extreme cases where open PvP has caused serious problems. Some game developers, though, are working out ways to keep griefing at a minimum without discouraging PvP. Star Citizen, for instance, is adding a crime and punishment system to the game. Unlike the crime and punishment system of Elite Dangerous, which has no teeth, this one carries considerable risk. Players who choose to roleplay as criminals or engage in griefing will face a mounting challenge. Not only will the game generate bounty hunter missions where they are the target, but once caught, those players will end up in prison. Prison in Star Citizen will have its own gameplay loop. Prisoners will have to earn merits to buy their way out of jail by working the prison mines. Or they can try to escape, but limited oxygen and harsh planetary conditions make that extremely difficult. The effect this will have will be huge. Most people who engage in griefing and player killing don't want to face consequences. So this kind of gameplay is going to turn them off big time. But they are going to be very vocal and CIG is going to have to stand their ground and not bend the knee as Frontier did. That being said, as open PvP continues to fall out of favor, 
its proponents are going to be very vocal. I don't want to name names because I don't want to be that guy that gets other YouTubers attacked. But a recent video is a prime example of what I'm talking about. This person is an influencer with a fairly large subscriber community and his content focuses mostly on MMOs. His latest video was more of a rant about companies using hype to advertise their games and then not delivering on that hype. But then it turned into a rant about radical changes to PvP in a new game he was really looking forward to playing once it came to the US. This change, lo and behold, is meant to prevent player killing. In his argument, he often uses terms and references associated with EVE Online, which clearly shows he's in the open PvP with no restrictions camp. Though I call his video a rant, it never devolved into name calling and shouting. He was actually pretty calm throughout the entire video. However, at some point near the end, he calls on the community to be more toxic when dealing with game developers that don't deliver the kind of gameplay that they, they meaning people who want open unrestricted PvP, want. And this crosses a line an influencer should never cross. His isn't the biggest channel, but he's got a large enough community that this gives him a lot of reach. That kind of power demands serious responsibility. So telling people to be more toxic is extremely irresponsible. I can understand being mad at a game developer for the things they do, especially if it's EA or Activision. But calling on people to attack developers because they don't give them exactly what they want sets a very bad example. Public opinion of gamers is bad enough as it is. We don't need this making it worse. Again, I'm not going to call this guy out because I don't want people attacking him. I just feel that he totally undermined his entire argument by calling his subscribers to be more toxic until they get what they want. I just feel that he totally undermined his entire argument by calling on his subscribers to be more toxic until they get what they want. That's just the wrong approach. Anyway, so much for being more positive. Well, in this case, I'm not really angry. I'm more disappointed than anything else. Thanks for watching. I've got more content on the way. Star Citizen is finally getting patch 3.8.2 soon, which should finally include the long-awaited Carrick. This is a ship that was a Kickstarter stretch goal back in 2013, and we're finally getting it in-game. Tiger pre-ordered the ship and is eagerly awaiting its arrival. We'll do a live tour of the ship once it's out. We've been playing it in the PTU, but that has a lot of bugs. So we're going to wait until it goes to live before we do a live stream. Also, we've been participating in Cobra TV's live streams. I haven't been on that much lately, but Tigra has joined him a bit more frequently. That's going to change now that I've got my HOTAS mounted to my desk and I've been configuring it for the game. That's all for now. Watch for our live streams coming soon, and I'm even going to have a product review in the near future. Thanks for watching. I've been Mike the Zorch, and I'll see you all next time. Namaste. This and other videos can be found on our alternate channels on LBRY and BitChute. Links are in the description below.